Hello, welcome back. And today we're gonna to be talking about my portfolio, how I created it, and different tips and tricks for you creating your own portfolio. Okay, so getting into what is a portfolio? So usually a portfolio is for graphic design students, sometimes a fine art students, and it is to showcase your best work that you wanna show for interviews and to your employers to see what skills you have and what projects you've worked on. So what is a portfolio binder? Specifically, what is a screw post binder? So a screw post binder, as I will show you, is just a um, binder with the front and the back with hinges and then with that screw post in the middle, you can put your sheets of paper in it and then screw it all back together. You can unscrew it to put different uh, pages in it. Um, and then you got your, your portfolio all together, really nice and professional looking. And it's definitely better than some of those art portfolios where you just slip something in a plastic sleeve. Do you need a portfolio? So this is a loaded question. I think depending on who you are and what you, enjoy to use to show your portfolio depends um, on this question. So you could either go with a physical portfolio like this one or do a digital one. Even if you have a physical portfolio, definitely have a digital one as well. Because nowadays, especially with COVID, you're not really meeting people for interviews and a lot of positions are even remote. So having a digital one for them to go onto your website and seeing all of your work, it's way more interactive. Um, they get to see an, even another side of you uh, that you can show just on paper. That's in itself is amazing. And I might go into that more in depth into another video talking about um, what different kind of digital portfolios you can create. Okay, so I'm gonna go into some of my questions that you guys had for me from my portfolio. Um, first one is, where did I get my portfolio? So I got my portfolio off of Etsy from Sleek Portfolios. They have so many different designs, different um, materials you can get it in. Wood, metal, or mine is acrylic. And it's just, it's great. Like you can do so many different customizations, make sure it's exactly what you want. I know when my professor was showing um, the different shops you can get your portfolio on, I wanted one that was frosted, but with gold hinges. All of the ones that I saw were silver and that was just not really the style. I ha liked a lot of warm colors and a lot of jewel tone colors. So I really wanted the gold to accent that. So they had that. So I really recommend looking at them. And I'll show you a couple more resources to where you can get your portfolios at the end. What size is your portfolio? My portfolio is a horizontal 11 by 14. Um, I really like that for the size. Um, definitely liked horizontal layout too but you can choose vertical as well. What bindings did I use? So I used with the screw post um, binder, I used adhesive strips that went onto the, my printed pieces of paper and that just, I stuck it right on and I put them right into the binder because it already had holes designated in the strips and it was so much easier than having to punch them out um, into the paper. One little thing with that though, is that you need to make sure that it's lined right or else you can't get it unstuck. So it's a one shot or else you're gonna rip your paper. So just be really careful. Mine came with a couple more backup strips. So I would recommend getting a couple more of those. Where did I get my portfolio printed? I actually just got it at FedEx. FedEx is an amazing place to get stuff printed all throughout college, the whole art department. <laughs> would overrun that place near campus. So I would really recommend them. You can go to Staples, you can go to other places that do printing. Um, that goes into my next question. What paper did I use? I can't remember exactly what paper I used, but I know that it was cover cardstock. So it was either 80 pounds or 100 pounds. This all depends on the feeling that you want, like how heavy you want it to be. Um, 80 pounds is good enough really but 100 pounds is just that little extra thickness if you want that and I try and think if there was a special coating on it or anything I really liked that it was very satiny not too glossy not super matte it showed the colors off really well without being like that glossy feel so I recommend talking to them about that they'll FedEx is so great. They'll walk you through it. They've been printing for so long that they know all the different papers, all the different printing methods. So they'll help you get on the right track. 
All right, so now is the time for tips. So my first tip is use a big enough portfolio to showcase your work. Make sure that there's enough space. Know if you wanna show a lot of photos with each project. Usually I say there's a sp whole spread for each project, so two pages. Um, I use 11 by 14 because I feel like it was big enough, but not too big. You can go down to an eight and a half by 11, but I just feel like it was restricting. I know some people like it for carrying it to interviews and it's not too bulky um, and it's cheaper, but I really like the 11 by 14 because it is a nice feel to it. This also goes into that you don't wanna smush all of your photos together. You wanna make sure there's breathing space around the borders and that there's plenty of margin, not just for printing, but also for viewing it that I love with the white, um, just kind of it highlights all the project photos around it and it just kind of comes together there. I also have a summary of each uh, project. So I wanted to make sure that there was room for that as well. Tip number two, include projects that you're proud of. It is all about quality and not about quantity. I was told by my professor to get 10 projects because that was what was needed and in the course aspects that was what was um, needed of us but I wouldn't say anything from five to ten projects make sure it's not just projects that you're like oh this is we'll do or like oh I, I guess I'll include it just to fit the numbers make sure it's something you're really proud of and maybe even if it's um, not a school project do something that you're passionate about do a passion project to to fill your portfolio in because that's why you're creating it. This goes into my next tip. Tip number three, display projects that show off your skills and what you enjoy to do. Um, this was a big thing that I appreciated my professor saying. She said, don't put something in there that you don't wanna get a job for. Don't put in web design. If you don't like doing web design, don't put in branding if you don't like doing branding. Make sure that it's all of your skills that you are proud of but then also that you would love to do, that you'd be so proud to show your employers. Tip number four, use process photos. So this includes sketches or even rough drafts. So this is great because it shows not just the finished product, but the process that it took to get to the finished product. I did this for the Peter Rabbit along with other brandy projects showing the lettering uh, and logo design. But for Peter Rabbit, I did a lot of the sketches for each element that it was included in the book and then also the rough drafts of each book cover. So from the sketch to super rough draft to almost done and then the big picture was finished. So I really like um, just including that process photo so that the people viewing your portfolio can just see kind of like your process to it and kind of the behind the scenes. So that's kind of fun. Tip number five, write out the summary for each project. Kind of said this before with the room, but really write out a little summary. It doesn't have to be too long. I think it's just like a paragraph. So three to five sentences about what is the project, why you created it, um, who is it for, or even what you love about it. So that is really great because it kind of gives you a little bit of a script to say in your interviews, but then also anyone who wanted just to look at your portfolio, it's a little bit of a guidance of the background to it. All right, for my last tip, tip number six, do not put any engravings on the outside of your portfolio. This is more of an opinion. You don't have to take my opinion and take it as fact, but I would really recommend not putting engravings or your logo on the outside of your portfolio. And this is just because portfolios are very expensive and time consuming to put together. Over $100 just for the portfolio itself, not including the actual printing. And if you want to change your branding anytime in the future or you get married, you change your name, then you have to get a whole new portfolio. I love my acrylic frosted look on my portfolio just so that I can have uh, first sheet in there that have my logo and the colors in it because I really still liked it, like the colors but you can see it through um, the cover it's a little bit muted but still when you open it like it's a grand reveal of it so I really like um, that frosted look so with that just be careful if you really want to do engraving and you really think you're confident in it and the style and it's what you want to share, go for it. That's, it's all up to you and I know it'll be great. So 
go for it. All right, so now I'm gonna go into some resources to help you guys complete your portfolio. So the first one is different Etsy shops for getting a portfolio and I have two, I have sleek portfolios that I mentioned before where I got mine, but there are also muse portfolios. So sleek portfolios is great. Like I said, so many variations. They have hundreds of different ones that you can look for. I looked up portfolios in Etsy and it was mostly them because they're so established and they have so many different options to choose from and so many great reviews. And then the other one is Muse Portfolio and they're one kind of style but um, they come in like bamboo wood and they actually have like a leather little strip in between the binding and the rest of the cover. So you can actually choose so many different colors with that as well. So that's a different style. So if that goes more with your style, I would check that out. Um, another one is Pina Zangario. That is like a very classic um, portfolio. That's the one that my teacher pointed me towards. Um, I felt like they had some that were discontinued. So not as many options they're great like design great feel very classic for like just a black portfolio or even like a steel metal portfolio it was really cool great for industrial designers and then another one is ruby paulina and i found that actually on amazon so i wanted to find a couple uh different ones that you could get really quickly on amazon um this is prime shipping and it is i think it's less than 100 but a little bit more than 50. Um, i'll put it up on the screen it looks like a really good option if you want something quick um, but there's really not a lot of options for portfolios on amazon so i was really surprised about that and lastly is a quick little um, resources for online portfolios you can start a website through either wix squarespace but you can also go on adobe go on um, behance and put all your projects up but you already are but put all your projects up on there and then you also have a portfolio website that transfers all of your projects from Behance to a website so that it's all connected. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps any senior graphic designers or other design students in creating a portfolio. Um, I know this ending of senior year is just so stressful and you're trying to get all of your projects done and you're trying to get your portfolio all created but know that your hard work will pay off and you're doing so great. And I'm just um, hoping that you have a wonderful rest of the semester. Um, and for anybody else, just keep working, keep being creative, and I hope you have a wonderful day.